Yo, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you are all doing well, mate. I really do hope that this is your match review of Chelsea's 2-0 loss to champions Liverpool in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge this Sunday. And you know what, man? I ain't that mad. We know what happened. We know why Chelsea lost here. It was down to two things, essentially. Christensen having a very peculiar rugby tackle moment getting sent off, sending Chelsea down to 10 men, and the game obviously changes from there. And of course, another Kepa Rita Balaga special. Oh my word, when will it end? Hopefully soon, because Chelsea have signed Mandy. So we're gonna get into it today, talk about player performances, etc, etc. But before we do, <laughs> consider subscribing to Football Therapy, man. It's usually very, very positive, and if you want daily Chelsea Football Club content, hey, this channel might be for you, so drop a sub, please. Bell notifications icon if you do, and if you wanna help a poor brother out and cheer me up, drop a like on this video. <laughs> Cheers, mate. All right, then, let's get into it. Right, so it's the second game of the season. Chelsea were missing Thiago Silva, Ben Chilwell, Christian Pulisic, arguably Chelsea's best attacking player at the moment, Hakim Ziyech, who have I said? Chilwell, Silva, Ziyech, Pulisic, and... I don't know who else I'm thinking of. I guess Mandy. Should we say to one Mandy? <laughs> Basically, we are far off from new Chelsea, Chelsea 2.0. <laughs> Just breathe, everybody. Liverpool put in an excellent performance and there were some very peculiar circumstances that saw the result of this game. Anyway, I want to get into it, so let's pull up the Who Scored graphic to show you what went down in this game. Liverpool started with pretty much their strongest lineup, although Fabinho drops into defence because Matip and Gomez are both injured, but Fabinho was excellent in defence next to Van Dijk, so it was hardly a weak inside for Liverpool. Also, we saw Thiago Alcantara come on at half-time as well, making his debut for the Reds. Now, Frank Lampard went with a sort of 4-4-2 slash 4-2-2-2 system with both Kai Havertz and Timo Werner up front, and to be honest, man, I am here for it. Chelsea only have one fit winger in the shape of Callum hudson Adore and we had to do a lot of defensive work, a lot of digging in in this game, and really that's not Callum hudson Doy's game, and while Chelsea are hamstrung by these absentees, it kind of made sense, and we all love to see a front two of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner. Kai Havertz had a few bright moments, but of course, it made sense for him to be hooked for a centre half when Christensen made that silly rugby tackle at the end of the first half, rightly getting himself sent off straight red. Yes, we had Kepper and goal. <laughs> More on that, I suppose, in a bit, but maybe not. It depends if I want to talk about it. The centre-back partnership was as assumed. Christensen and Kazuma, of course. Christensen only decided to play a half, and then he decided to switch sports to American football. We had Reese James at right back, and Marcus Alonso played at left back. Of course, the most, I was going to say, the most conventional left back. He's not really. But to be honest, he wasn't the problem in this game, so fair enough. And the midfield four slash box midfield consisted of Kovacic, Chelsea's player of the year, returning turning to the pitch, Jorginho, N'Golo Kante, and Mason Mount. Now, Chelsea's tactics in this game was to lay off Liverpool a little bit, try and find the spaces, and then pretty much play in the Timo Werner and Kai Havertz, who were both very, very quick, respectively, and of course can play together well. And fair enough, Chelsea conceded a lot of possession, but they were very resolute and good in their defensive shape, for the most part for while there were still 11 men on the pitch. And that's impressive because Chelsea have been very, very poor without the ball last season. So it was good to see a little switch up from there. And there was a few good moments from Kepa Rita Balaga in the first half as well. Not just the defensive backline that were good, but Kepa did make some saves. And I was about to tweet out how okay he was playing when he made that howler. Of course, the two goals came from Sadio Mane. Now, he scored a lovely header from a bit of a give and go from Liverpool, and that was quality. Reese James was the wrong side of Sadio Mane, but to be honest, it was a great header, and it was a great goal. You kind of banked on Liverpool scoring one decent open play goal in this game, which they did in that instance. But the second goal from Liverpool was just obviously the Kepa mistake. He passed the ball to Mane, and Mane just took it, intercepted it quite easily, and scored. So that Kepa, how it's a, it has to be called a howler, it's nothing else. Really Liverpool just scored that one decent open play goal 
Um, they, and this is not a criticism, of course, of Liverpool because they didn't need to. Chelsea, of course, got um, a penalty in the second half. And Sod's Law, it was just one of those games. Jorginho misses his first Premier League penalty. And that was a chance to maybe unnerve Liverpool and get back in the game, even with 10 men. So why were we with 10 men? Let's talk about it. Christensen running back, chasing Sadio Mane, puts his arms around him, takes him down. He was the last man. It's just clean red. It's just a clean red card. Why does he do it? I have absolutely no idea. He obviously got confused, flustered, and it's a shame because I don't think he was particularly playing badly other than that, but he did that. Chelsea go down to 10 men, they concede that really good goal to Liverpool and of course Kepa makes the mistake afterwards and it's 2-0 to Liverpool and Chelsea do not convert the penalty. You completely understand why 100% uh, success rate Jorginho took it, but in hindsight it would have been nice just to see Timo Werner absolutely smash it and get his first goal for Chelsea, but why would you when you've got Jorginho on the pitch, so I completely understand that. Let's talk about player performances then. Kepa in goal. <laughs> He did punch a ball, I think he even claimed a cross, and he made a good save in the latter stages of the game from Mane, a long range drive, but it all, it's all doesn't mean anything because he made an absolute howler and gave them a goal. It's such a shame. Fortunately for Chelsea, Mundy is coming in, and you have to think, you have to think he's absolutely going to be Chelsea's starting goalkeeper. Right back, Reese James, very good for me. Of course, the. Um, Mane header, he gets away from him a little bit, but it's still a very good header and he did well to get away from him. I actually think he was very good. Uh, Christensen, I have to say, was poor because of what he did getting sent off. Zuma was actually excellent this game. He won so many duels. He was didn't make any mistakes. He did some no-nonsense defending as he does. And pretty much that's confirmation it's going to be Zuma partnering Thiago Silva. It has to be. A massive shout out for Tomori when he came on though. He looks fine. He, he looks comfortable. So he deserves plaudits as well. Left back Marcus Alonso didn't really get roasted. Not like he did out against Lamptey. So fair play Alonso really. I actually think Jorginho was very good in this game. He does play out of the press quite quickly. He's that sort of metronomic passing midfielder. And when given the ball he released it immediately and that relieved pressure for Chelsea. So fair play Jorginho and then similarly what, that's what Jorginho does best, Kovacic does best dribbling out, he was pretty good in this game as well. Fair play. I think Kante, N'Golo Kante was brilliant in this game, he looks back to his best, constantly chasing, made some interceptions, always making the right defensive and progressive runs, and Mason Mount as well, high octane, much like uh, Timo Werner, he ran to the very very end, he also hit a wonderful long range uh, shot that just went over and that would have potentially changed the game if had it gone in. So he was pretty good as well. Uh, Kai Havertz played a wonderful pass. He played a wonderful set piece as well, but still settling into the side and sadly had to be hooked at half time because of the red card. So he's basically just sacrificed. He suffered that uh, because of Christensen's antics. And similarly, Timo Werner was excellent as well. He won the penalty, he ran till the end, he made some excellent runs from the inside, from the left flank, and like I said, you know, like, like most of the guys in midfield, he ran constantly. And that's really all you can ask for. Him, probably Kurt Zuma, and Golo Kante, and Timo Werner were the best performers in this match. Frank Lampard brought on Tammy Abraham and Ross Barkley later on in the game and, you know, didn't bring on Hudson Odoi. Some Chelsea fans were criticising that, but Chelsea were not playing with wingers and they were digging in defensively. Uh, Callum Hudson Odoi, when he's been on the. I'm the biggest Callum Hudson Odoi fan ever, but of course, we've seen him when Chelsea play without the ball. He's not good defensively, so you don't bring him on. You bring on the physicality of Ross Barkley. Fair enough. And at that point, you know, Tammy Abraham, fresh legs, a striker. Why not? But ultimately, the game ends 2-0 to Liverpool. And it's just, you know, great effort from the boys. It was good showing tactical shape. But the two goals, there's context from both of them. One, an excellent piece of work from Liverpool. And the other one, a Kepa Howler. Had we had 11 men on the pitch to the end, Kai Havertz staying on, combining with Werner. Maybe we don't concede the second, you know, what maybe we draw, who knows, win that game. So, 
I wouldn't read too much into it, I saw some positives here, Chelsea are going to need some time to develop and grow together and reintroduce the absentees into this side and develop into the new Chelsea that they are. Uh, Liverpool are the finished article aren't they, They're the finished model, they played incredibly well today and I think Chelsea and Frank Lampard expected that. So it sucks but you know we move on I think. Anyway I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think about the game? Please do drop a like if you've enjoyed my content today. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, that's it, man. Up the chills. Enjoy the football. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.